This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Hi Clive, welcome back to Talk of Asian Marketing. We are back again. We're back again, we're back with steak. Back we're with back steak with... again. I think I've eaten too much steak in the last few weeks. I know, I'm feeling pretty pretty full of it. But uh, <laughs> we're here, we... You are full of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Both full of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little bit of British humour for you. So, we're here with Tasty this time, so... Tasty. And it has, I mean, it's no doubt this is a steak restaurant with this real strong red motif. That's their big part sign. Of the, part of their logo. Yep. Yep. So Tasty, we've got big some red sign. interesting experiences there from locally around Taizong and of course as well from China, from Shanghai, where we went to experience the Tasty uh, restaurant there. As we mentioned before, of course, Tasty evolved from the original steakhouse concept, the one pink steak concept, and the fact that they were looking for an avenue to develop their brands while also not firing staff, given the fact that they realized they kind of saturated the really high-end market. So a way to keep their employees and then go for a lower, maybe a lower margin business, a lower end business. That was it. So the sort of Mm, so what we see here, which is kind of interesting, is how they've abbreviated some of the service processes, but whilst bringing together that core that we keep emphasizing here of the food experience along with the service experience. Of course, the key point being the prices are a lot less. They're a lot, a lot less. I mean, we're talking, what, six, seven hundred for a place setting here, which U.S. dollars is... Well, you're probably talking 15 to 20 dollars rather than 40 dollars. Rather than 40 dollars. So roughly about half. So this is really right in the access point mm -hmm. for the student group. So well, we did see that when I was there last uh, time. We saw groups of students and they pushed a bunch of tables together. We did have to make a reservation now. And so it's, it's, you keep mentioning this. Yeah, so I really I bugs think my, <laughs> me and my wife, you know, making these reservations. I don't know. What was the point of moving to Taiwan? We're we going to make reservations for everything. I think that's, but I think that's really good news. And I think it goes back. It touches really nicely on a point that came out recently. They're on the news, what, uh, within the last three weeks, in mm -hmm. fact. And why were they on the news? Because in the economic downturn, they're reporting healthy profits. Mm -hmm. So clearly within uh, Taiwan and within uh, China, where they're really growing rapidly, they are developing healthy Still have margins. Have good so. customer base. And, and the times I was there, I've been there two times just in the last week to check it out, and both times they were packed. Yeah, so they, their package they're putting together is clearly really hitting the market. So as you say, you've clearly been there a few times more recently, in fact, than I have. So, of course, well, the first thing you see is the big red sign, right? Uh, it's, yes. In fact, <laughs> it makes me remember exactly the experience in Shanghai because we were checking around, looking for where it was, and high up on a building, I saw exactly the motif we were looking for. Oh. You know, red sign, tasty written on it. I said, there it is. And we, uh, we as you say, we needed to call to make the reservation, so we called from outside, mm -hmm. and no problem, we got in. So, great. So... As you walked in, what well, you go in, they you right know? away they'll have somebody out front checking on who's had reservations. They'll even, you know, go out of their way to ask you, you know, did you make a reservation? Are you waiting to come into the restaurant? And you go ahead in, link up with whoever you're waiting for, or whatever. They'll help you find everybody. So right away from the beginning, the service staff is oriented towards an active behavior rather than passive. They, they don't wait for you to ask; they just actively go out and, and get you. They have uniforms too, but their uniforms are, again, different from the Wanping kind of more formal uniforms and different from the kind of Japanese kimono motif. Yes, no. These are much more plain, just kind of red, pinkish looking outfits. You go in, then the whole pink, red uh, motif plays a role. The whole place is lit up with red lights. Uh, a little bit dim, but still this red thing. In fact, all my videos look like I had a red filter. Yeah, that them. really comes out strongly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's all, all that kind of idea. Of course, the big difference is you don't have the tables separated like you do in Wamping. 
you don't have a lot of glass separating areas. Rather, everything tends to be all together. So you just have a big area, and here's some tables, here's some tables, here's some along the wall, here's some in the middle. So right away you get much more of the kind of a normal steakhouse kind of yeah. feel to it. It has much more of a typical eating house kind of feel that we've talked about. Exactly. Where you, you do have the tables together. There isn't the same emphasis as in the higher end part of uh, creating a service gate that separates groups. You're a little bit more no. on I, I don't even think there's any private rooms there at all. So right away you get that feeling that it's a little bit of a more normal Taiwan steakhouse experience. And of course, the good part of that is you can push tables together. We have some video of groups pushing their tables together, mm -hmm. families or classmates or co-workers, and they get those together for some fun. <laughs> Once you sit down, you get your menu, and we come back to that system again. It's really the same system in all three of these uh, retail segments that they're addressing the same way, mm -hmm. which is, this is your first course, here's three choices, choose one. This is your second course, here's four cho choices, choose one. Mm -hmm. This is your main course, uh, three choices, choose one, that kind of thing. And um, once you get used to it, it's kind of easy to do. <笑>那甜點呢甜點是個甜點是個甜點好好吃甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點甜點
That's right. And I mean, it's beautifully set up. The moment where, of course, as you, as we've said, you get to the end of the estate, you think, boy, you know, or you don't quite reach the end, or some bits are left. Immediately, you can call someone over. They put it into a beautiful doggy bag, and you take it back. It's nicely done, obviously prearranged, and absolutely, yeah, you know, there's that sense that you're paying a, a fairly good amount of money and they want you to feel overwhelmed with a sense of yeah, what you're it. getting and I think right. that comes out very strongly and if that's the only big criticism then I'm sure they're very, very happy with uh, because this is a sort of issue that you're picking up on the blogs right, I've looked at some of the blogs too it, yeah. and people you know, mention the amount of food that you're really overwhelmed with that they talk about the service process and the excitement well, a lot of people <clears throat> get excited about the service process and again it's the same thing you sit mm-hmm. down, you go through the menu, you make your choices, and then here comes the appetizer. An appetizer on a little kind of boat-looking plate, and here's your three little appetizers, and then next comes your soup or your salad, and then comes your main course, and then your dessert, and then your drink. And your daughter gets was really engaged with that. Yeah, well, we all were sharing, you know. We're all, everyone wanted to get the different ones we tried out and share. And I think a lot of people do this. They go there for that experience of it. And that's really, again, they're just doing the same thing, only they're going for a lower price range and a younger audience. And I think some of these service processes are abbreviated a little bit too, where in the one steak, the higher end uh, mm. point, they'll often come and if you want, they'll prepare the whole steak for you. They'll cut it off the bone in front of you, cut it down. And so they'll take the whole. Well, I was surprised. You know, at, at Tasty, they actually each time we were we were there, yeah. they would after your main meal comes, right. the steak or whatever it is you have, they will cut it for you, mm. start to, mm. and they'll ask you if they if you want them to cut it off. Mm, right, yes. And if they, if you don't, you say no, thank you, and they'll just stop. So I was a little bit surprised that I don't know if this is a recent development, but it seems like. A lot of the service is overlapping into even the lower end of tasty. Yes. Oh, I, I, the, you've got those processes coming through and mm-hmm. I think they've kept some in critical ones like we've talked about before where you have the opportunity for a little bit more contact they very cleverly maintain that like cutting the steak and talking but to I have you. to wonder though James what do you think um, at, at one thing you know at the steakhouse they're coming and cutting your meat for you it's kind of a service but at Tasty, you know, we asked her why she was doing that, and she says, because some people don't know how to cut their steak. Interesting, interesting. But of course, there are people, I mean, you and I take it for granted, we sort of move between a knife and a fork and a chopstick right, right, and exactly. fork and spoon and all these tools of eating. Whereas, I, for, you know, some people, how to cut up things with a knife and fork, it sounds... It's totally foreign, yeah. It's really... Alien. I know that sounds odd, and I think as well people don't want to look awkward doing it, doing something that they're not completely familiar with. But then so it's also to one thing's advantage, to get the consumer, again, to educate them, to sure. get them up to speed, to make them feel comfortable, and next time they come back, they know what to do. Yeah. And it's, it's, again, that point is so well made that they're just moving just ahead of the consumer. Right. She's actually going to every table showing people how to do it. Well, you want a spicy thing here, the spicy thing, ah. Huh? So they're they're ready to do it because that's something that people appreciate. If you don't want the whole thing cutting up, they don't do it. But if you do and appreciate that, they take it there. So all the time, like a great business, they're just in front of the customer. So you feel good about it, but yet they haven't gone overboard. So they're ready for the next innovation to come along. We had a chance to talk to the waitress, Mm -hmm. our waitress that night, Mm -hmm. and uh, gave us some good information. Of course, because we're professors. professors (laughs) We're business professors, and we said, you know, you look like you're a student. Where are you a student at? And she was a student, Mm -hmm. and she was actually a recently graduated student, and this was her work practice Mm -hmm. time, 
uh, on the job uh, assignment where she would graduate from school or students who are just about to graduate will have to go out and work maybe six months at a company. And she told us this was part of that. So her salary is maybe a little bit lower than normal because it's part of that training process. Mm -hmm. And my wife's reaction was, well, if you're a college graduate, what are you doing working as a waitress? You know, she's a little bit surprised by this. You know, a, a college graduate as a waitress, what's the world come to these mm -hmm. days? And I think that this is, you know, a big shift in thinking and reality is that in today's service world, you know, who do you want to service you? And I, I, I came up with this um, analogy. Mm -hmm. I was saying if you go to Las Vegas and you're playing cards or you're gambling, who do you want on the other side of the table? Mm -hmm. Someone without a high school education or someone with a university education in tourism management who knows how to give you a good service, right? Mm -hmm. So this all makes sense, and I think... Tasty's right out there in the front saying that we understand service is important and we're going to hire people that have an education level that matches what we think the customer's expectations are these days. I think that, and just to build on that for sure, the HR model, the human resource model that lies behind that, spends a lot of time emphasizing recruiting these sort of people and then providing them with a very structured career path so that they get effective training but also the incentive through systematic training, through contribution to the company in a variety of ways that include quality of service, evaluations about their service um, and lots of other aspects so that within a comparatively short time they have the opportunities for promotion right through to actually being the restaurant manager. So that's a structured program they've developed and it centers on one of the core values of Chinese, which of course is stability, having a job, having a good prospect. So when people join the company, that's a good thing that they can go home, tell friends, tell family. Yeah, I think it's a hard one because of course what we always have are, if someone's working at a restaurant, one of the biggest fears of a, of a restaurant owner is that my employees are going to take my ideas, go and open his own restaurant. So I think it's important that the company provides that path for employees to have a future with the company and feel, develop that loyalty. And this is not an easy thing to do in Asia. Particularly in Asia. In fact, when uh, I went to talk to one of the restaurant managers for Wong Steak, mm. who uh, is probably one of their best managers across the group for that, uh, for that particular brand, and she's come right from the bottom, like we're talking about, low entry point, risen right through to be the restaurant manager, mm. well recognized within the group as being, as I say, one of their, their stars. And of course, all her friends have this reaction. They turn around and say, well, why are you still here? Why don't you open your own restaurant? Yeah. You know how to why do it. You'll be the boss. Yeah. Why don't you be the boss? Yeah. Which is a very, very sort of Chinese way of thinking about the problem. And her reaction is, I really like what I do here. Yeah. I can give, deliver something that's very special to the customers. And I know that if I sit down to just do my own thing, it would never be able to create what I create here for the customer. So she's understood the power of being part of the sort of Wong Ping steak family, basically, of that culture, of the togetherness, of the processes, of the support and how that all comes together to create something that's quite special for customers. And she recognizes that trying to do that on her own just wouldn't work out. So I think that's yeah. quite I think this is really a really unique part. You know, it's, easy to, it's easy to listen to this and say, you know, it's no big deal. But mm. in a Chinese environment, it's really unusual. It's very, very unusual to have a company that, number one, emphasizes service up front so mm. strongly and then also emphasize the development of their employees to stay with the organization. In a systematic way. In a like systematic this. way, right. And really delivers that value, but not in a wishy-washy, we're family kind of way. It has a lot of process right. behind it. Not just it. the words, yeah. It's not the words. It has process and meaning behind it, mm -hmm. so that it creates an intense sense of loyalty. <coughs> Excuse me. And as you're saying in Asia that's very unusual where people want to move on they want to be the boss right. but with those opportunities for promotion for development combined with a sense of security mm -hmm. then it becomes a job that is very very appealing and as you say like your wife's reaction yeah. you know what graduate would want to work here but I think they've actually created a human resource model that says what student wouldn't want to work there and wouldn't want to have a future there. So 
again, smart thinking, and this is reflected again across the group. You've got a very clever chairman who's very, very effective at leading people, coalescing support. I have to say and the pay was good too. Yeah. We got numbers on the pay. We got and the it was quite, quite good. It's very attractive. It's yeah. very attractive. So again, all part of the HR package. They pulled that together. You get good quality pay compared to the market. They're paying above market value. And then you've got at the top, you've got a group of very close-knit mm -hmm. senior management team, all of which have won major awards in their fields. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of excellence coming together. Very exciting. Yeah, really new developments. So to wrap that up, uh, <coughs> we got our card for our feedback. We mm -hmm. filled it out. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mm -hmm. actually had some comments to make. So we said that, in our opinion, the uh, courses were good, mm -hmm. but we wish that the uh, steak was a little bit higher quality mm -hmm. and maybe the amount could be less. Mm -hmm. In other words, the steaks were just too big, mm -hmm. but the quality wasn't that good. Gee, an American saying that? I know, it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> But really, I, every time I've been there, I felt full before the main meal even came. So, you know, before the main course. So we, we gave this as an input. And um, a day later, we got a phone call. Mm -hmm. And this was the, not the manager of the store, but the manager in charge of, I think, like the service area. Somehow they divide up service yes. responsibility. Yes, yes, yes. And they called my wife and said, you know, what was wrong? What did you think? Was there a problem? Mm -hmm. And followed up on the exact question. and knew the question she had. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Here's a we have a video some video of her getting him. Nimsi 好啦,我們不要再跟小安東西過去了,好,好,OK,你們要跟你的來西屯家過去就丟掉。I don't know how you have that video uh, to have. I just grab my camera everywhere. <laughs> and um, before we left the store that night, because we filled it out and put some comment on there, they even gave us coupons to get a free kind of drink or something mm -hmm. next time. They don't have alcoholic drinks, I don't think, but some kind of sweet drink or something. Oh, yes, yes. Well, that's very nice. And I think, again, what, what, what you're talking about there is systematized. So. Right. What they say is if a customer has a complaint, something they're dissatisfied with, then they move immediately to address that. And this that. wasn't really even a complaint. It's a suggestion. They called the follow-up to make sure they had it clear what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And even before we left, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, we went back another day, like a week later, mm -hmm. and um, the girl who was our waitress before mm -hmm. uh, saw us, even though she wasn't our waitress this time, mm -hmm. and took that opportunity to take some complimentary drinks and give them to us. That's a very nice touch, very nice touch. Yes, yeah, so those, those little touches, I think, that, like I say, again, I come back to the same idea. A core product that's foreign, mm. being introduced in a way that takes some of the local metaphor and then brings some of that exotic. And what's the exotic? In this case, something different. Getting that kind of personalized service, yeah. which is really kind of unknown or unheard of or just not practiced that much in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, um, even in Singapore, you know, these are just not things. Unless you're at Western restaurants, yeah. it's just not a very Chinese-oriented thing. Well, it's, uh, it reflects from a marketing point of view that so many situations are still in that transaction mode, basically. Right, exactly. You get one customer in, you've got one more dollar. They go out. Certainly at the steakhouses, you know. That's it. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. bam. They see about. the dollars coming in. If you come back, that's very nice. I see you again. You give me the dollar. Right. Whereas... What we're seeing right across all these examples from the different Wangping segments is what they value is the customer coming back. Yeah. And they have statistics on that. They know how often their customers come back. When they don't come back, they're interested in what's going on. They're very proactive, as, as you mentioned here, about feedback that they're getting from the customers. And managers are specifically told if there's a complaint, they must follow up. 
and there's a lovely incident where one customer said his soup was too cold, he was very unhappy about it. And where did he live? He lived in Penghu, which is an island off the Taiwan coast. So the manager personally flew from Taipei to Penghu really? to apologize and Amazing. take some wine and other gifts or to address. And I've heard from now two, three other independent sources of similar situations where people have made a complaint, they've been very unhappy, and the manager's personally visited them at home wow. or in their work situation to deliver an apology and a gift. So very, very passionate about getting it right. And that makes a difference in this kind of situation. Yeah, really, really important. And um, that wraps it up for our steak eating. I think, uh, I think wow, I had my I'm full too. too. <laughs> <laughs> Great. We're going to change our topic to like uh, noodles or something. What? You're still on the food? <laughs> okay. I, 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 th- I think we've got an exciting <laughs> way of losing weight coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go study weight loss programs. That's well, I, I'm forgetting about that. We've got an exciting <laughs> show coming up that's going to focus on sex in Asia. Oh, well, that's a way to lose weight. <laughs> so that's a way to lose weight. So that's coming up on the horizon. We're looking forward to talking about that. That's a great way to work off a steak diet. I okay. Reckon. Yeah, more shows in the future. See you there. Yeah, you are so cheeky. (laughs) (laughs) You just gotta get that in there. This is Talk of Asian Marketing with a special emphasis on localized Chinese consumer behavior. Thank you.